Hello everyone and welcome to today's lesson. Oh, I'm so excited. We are going to be going over an Oriana game from today. Now, it, I'm not the best Oriana player. I'm a little rusty. I was breaking her out into range without too much uh, consideration or too much practice, too much warming up. But as you can see uh, from the composition, we had a lot of ball delivery, right? Um, I mean, hell, even Lucian could dash in if it was, like, really late and I still hadn't used an ultimate and it's down to, like, the last two of us and we're about to either go and win or we aren't. And uh, there's a lot of opportunity there. Obviously, more importantly, though, it's going to be Trindamir, spin right on in, ult, hit a number of people, Zin, dash right on in, ult, bring in a number of people, um, Brom, if I put the ball on him, can't necessarily dive in on his own, but since we have two really hard divers in Trindamir and Zinn, his stand behind me can bring him there. So I could even ball Brom and start a channel, and by the time it completes where Brom's at, we'll be in the middle of the team fight. So at least that was the theory. It ended up working out. We did win this game. It went over in our favor. My scoreline looks pretty decent. The 22 assists seems a little ridiculous. <laughs> I went I went support Orion to that game, I suppose. But the reason it worked out that way is I think I was playing a lot more cautiously than I should have. I wasn't getting proper CS because I was feeling a little rusty. But let's hop right into the replay. Without further ado, let's see what today's lesson is going to be about. How about it? Let's go ahead and pull up the drawing tool. Make sure we can show off all the stuff. Let me see if you guys can actually see that. Can you see all this? Nope. Okay, hold on. Unfortunately, nope. Open this up, show you guys the squares. And back to the actual drawing we go now. I'm gonna show you perfect, perfect. Okay, so one of the things that can be done, which I don't think I did this game to mitigate feeling kind of feeling kind of off um, coming onto a champion that you're a little rusty on, especially in a rough matchup like a Fizz. Fizz is double, I mean, not double combat summoners, but Ghost is a lot more aggressive than Flash. Can be. Depends. But Fizz is a tough champion to play against. So this is a good way to start. Use the ball to scout. Because you don't take damage from the ball. That's good. Um, go ahead and go a little bit quicker because not much happens early on. But so I'm feeling a little, little wary. I think actually we do wind up going in just because my ball scouting reveals that it's safe to want to be in here. Fortunately we didn't have Zin with us so... We're not going to get too much out of this, but just the Braum stun forces the flash. Perfect. Take that for free. Great. Botling's going to have a little bit of an easier time because they got a free flash out of that. Fantastic. The um, start that you can do if you're feeling a little, little rough on a champion is doing a double Doran start or even triple Dorans if you're feeling like you're falling behind. It will slow down your build. But it, each Doran's item is like its own item. So completing three items quickly isn't that bad. Um, the Dorans give you very good stats for their value. And like that passive is really strong, again, for the price. So it's not that bad to do. Definitely something that can help you feel a little bit more comfortable in your lane. Which I wasn't feeling very comfortable. I knew I had to pressure Fizz early. So I was looking to try and get as much of my passive from my... Um, my uh, extra damage on my auto attacks on him as possible. Try and proc that Thunderlord as frequently as I can. We're still getting all the last hits here. I miss, I miss a couple of them. That's fine. Not a big deal. See, it's level 2, so I need to back off. Uh, Fizz's W resets just like Annie's Q every time he gets a kill with it, so he's going to be using that quite a bit. And that'll help him press the wave out a lot quicker. So I need to match that by pushing forward, getting that AoE down to not only harass him, but hopefully shove the wave and maintain control over the wave. Tried to get the Q on him, mess up. Luckily I hit three so I can shield. I was hoping to leash the ball to me 
And this is something you can tell from the oops. Something you can tell from the rust. So my cooldowns are up right now because I just used them there. They're gonna come back shortly. Most of them are back here. I had three seconds left on command attack, right? So luckily, when he goes in right here, I hit level three, right? He leveled first, and you can tell why, because the minions are such, you know? Um, so it's important that we play back so this trade doesn't happen when we're at level two. And we level so quickly, I'm not even sure the damage made it through, so we might not have gotten the damage in at level two. So it's gonna work out overall favorably for us. But if you use command shield right now, I could shield to me through him so it gets a little bit of damage onto him and it also gives me a shield, right? So that's the move I'm looking to do. Unfortunately, I didn't have it leveled, right? And in the moment, leveling the ability and using it immediately, it's a little tough. By now, I definitely could have had it leveled. And you see the ball? starts to move right now because I level it and call it back to me at a certain point right around here before the playful trickster started I was thinking okay that ball is so far away if I just walk a little ways further I can leash it back to me because I'm going to exceed the range at which it can remain on the field in a distance from me and then it'll pop right back to me I won't have to wait for any travel time for it to get there and I can just get the instant shield and then I could block this play for, playful trickster damage. Unfortunately, I screw up the leash range. This is still within leash range because you can actually leash the ball for quite a distance. And because I'm a little rusty on Orion, this is the first time I'm playing her, not quite used to the leash range, so mismanage of the ball micro there. And that means it's gonna take this travel time to get to me. So maybe it hits Fizz on the way, but it does kind of negligible damage. And I'm not going to block the damage from Playful Trickster. So this gets here late. I take the damage. Now Fizz is on cooldown. Fizz's W is going to do a lot of damage to me, though. And I'm thinking, wait, I got to trade. I got to trade back here. I can't leave this. So I'm thinking, all right, let's go. One more hit procs his Thunderlords, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it procced his Thunderlords. And that's what forces me to be like, okay, this might be an all-in situation. I've got the minions hitting him in the call for help. I'm way outside of his minions' call for help. We've just traded cooldowns again. So in a protracted fight, it's going to be even unless if I throw down something to make the difference. So throw down exhaust. He pops out ghosts in response. Try and get as much damage as possible. As soon as I see that Zin is coming in, on this flank right after I throw out exhaust. It's all about keeping him in the fight right now. Right now I'm using myself as bait so he will urchin strike, he'll take his Q in on me. Perfect. Perfect, because I can probably survive. I still have flash. The goal is to keep him in range for Zen to be able to gap close and then we're fine. So that's exactly what happens. I flash just to be sure, throw the E on myself to make sure there's no burn and that's enough for Zen to be able to flash, hit him, get all the damage. I do want to throw out the Q just to make sure Fizz can't like playful trickster away or do any shenanigans, get to the scuttle crab and Q through it, anything like that. So I want to stay here. I want to throw out a Q for a little extra damage, but I definitely don't want to allow Fizz to turn on me and Q me and kill me because I'm very low. I'm very low in HP, so much so I just covered it up there. <laughs> So, as soon as I throw that Q out, I just start backing off back to the wave. Let him go ahead and secure the first blood, go back to farming out the wave. Good play, good start. I think that's probably the right way to have done it. Maybe I could have done a little bit better just in like the initial trade, so we didn't have to go uh, one for one in turrets there, or in summoners there. He does wind up holding ignite. So I'm going to be behind in Summoners because I had to blow both mine. But that should be mitigated by the fact that I got the kill. So I get enough of the wave to where it's pushing. Start the recall. Soak a little XP on my way back. 
then I do get the double door and start, which is good just to secure that victory. Give myself a little extra sustain from lane, get some uh, vision secured. Great that Zin can go down here, almost get the kill there. Unfortunately, he didn't, but nonetheless, we're back in lane now. This little CS, that's fine. Fizz is gonna go back here because he shoved it out so hard he blew through his mana. He does have the double door and start as well. So I'm not entirely sure what the back was over. Kind of made me think he was roaming. So I went down and threw the control ward at that point in time to make sure we have vision of the river in case he's coming through there. Now he's, since uh, our Trinomir is recalling, I don't really need to worry about him coming up through this river and it's warded so we would see it. So I kind of need to worry about him already being past this vision point in bottom and coming back and me not seeing that. So that's what this is really for on this side. Also, you guys know I just think this is the most valuable bush to throw a red ward in in the entire game. So, come back to lane, farm this out. Try and push it in once I uh, realize he was either back or just went to gank lane and didn't work out and went back. The Urchin Strike, he gets uh, I think that's what it's called. No, Seastone Trident. The Urchin Strike is the Q he's about to use on me right now. Um, with the W, he's able to last hit onto turret a little bit more consistently than most. You really gotta pressure Fizz though, because Fizz's weak point is his farming in lane. He should be behind in lane almost every time. So since I'm, since I want to go for that, that's why I'm sort of positioning aggressively here. But doing so allows him to come in for the trade. Wait for the playful trickster to be done. You know, he does get Thunderlords, but that's his whole combo basically. He's going to be getting the W off on me consistently. But here comes my cooldowns, right? Get a little bit of that back. The W does insane damage. Most of that was from the W almost. So I need to play safe, but I, like we said before, went back, bought a lot of sustain. So we just chug those pots, hang out, try and secure the farm, make sure we don't die to an Italy gank, great. Um, let me go back because we're powering through this because this is a long clip, or a long uh, match, we got 35 minutes, so. As soon as Nidalee is coming through lane, Zen is like, alright, now's my chance to counter gank. Perfect opportunity. Right here is where I need to start rotating down. Because this is enough distance between me and Fizz to where it's safe to move. And Fizz is going to be hanging out largely in this area because this is unexpected. This isn't warded. Nidalee is going straight through this brush though. So I need to start answering that as quickly as I can to make this a 2v1, not just a surprise 1v1 where he gets his cooldowns ahead. Because then Fizz can come in much faster. Fizz is far more mobile than me. So I need to position forward right now towards them. To start doing. Very good. This is something we struggled with in previous episodes, so I'm, I'm happy to see myself do that. Maybe it was arguably a little bit slow. Taking a last hit on the way, but don't let it slow me down very much. Throw the shield over into him to try and get the damage to on her from bringing the shield. And then also I could W. He finishes her off before either of those go off. So I don't get the kill credit or the assist credit. I also don't get the chaos, which I wasn't really looking for. Um, but I don't get the assist credit, which I was looking for, so that's too bad. But... Nonetheless, I'm glad I moved it there. It again, definitely disincentivized Fizz from going in and trying to trade back on him. Both just because he was able to burst her so effectively, and because I was involved in the fight with my ball already there. Not bad. Seems okay. I go down. Seeing me come like this should really telegraph that the gank is coming. Which is unfortunate for Zin because then they might start backing off. But Zin's already there, so they'll also they could also think, okay, we've got a little bit of time before Ariana gets here. We can just try and shove this out or something. And that would be fortunate for Zen. So mind games could mean this is bad, but regardless, we didn't know the word was there. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw this onto Red Vision. 
so I'm coming down. I figure they're going to start backing off because they'll either season or I need to um, get there sooner to go in with Zen regardless. So I'm going to take the blast gun over just to make it a little bit quicker. In the brush with Zen. When Zen's going out, I delay myself a little bit. Make them think it's not uh, just me. And I'm looking for the ultimate. I ball Zen because I'm waiting for him to go in. Unfortunately, our Braum uh, isn't tanking the turret. We're trying to shove the wave in. So it's a bit of miscommunication, right? The reason we have to go in now like this is because Nidalee's here, right? That makes this effectively a zone that we're cut off from our allies from, right? We are effectively broke by this. Now, it's one thing to be diving the turret, but when it's the turret and Nidalee, this is too much. So we gotta go right now and change those numbers, change the setup, otherwise we're not gonna make it. So we have to go in now. Zin tanks it because he's got the shield on him and I'm already taking, I've already taken a chunk of damage so I can't tank. So Zin's the one to go in. Ball's on him. I throw out the ultimate just to make sure we kill Draven as quickly as possible so he can't get any return damage. Great. Unfortunately, Zin's going to die. Now I want to review my management of my actual body through this game, right? Through this game. Because here's what happens, right? Zin goes down. Whatever. But now I'm way out of position. Again, we've got the same problem. This wall is set up. And I have to go around or break through. Right? That's really tough. But I didn't have to be behind this wall because Zen wasn't, right? So let's go back. Whether or not that would work out for us. Let's just examine how we could have positioned better in that fight. This is fine. Walk away to dodge the Alistair Q. Give distance between me and Zin and the turret. So the turret for sure aggroes onto him over me. Good sidestep there by both of us to dodge an Italy Spear. If she can get that and engage, this fight might have gone completely different. Right here, I'm doing the right thing. I'm walking through. I don't necessarily want to walk right by Alistair. Even though he just burned his cooldowns, they might be up again soon. So it might be dangerous to walk right past him. Especially since that's going to... Give Nidalee a really easy spear shot onto me in an easy engage. So I'm a little hesitant about going there. But I don't think there's much better place to go right now. I can't really just hang out here with Nidalee. After I've thrown down this ultimate, especially, I'm far less threatening. So I need to walk right now. I need to have Zin in his nice tuxedo escort me. So right here, this juking back, especially when... We kind of have control over this area because there's three of us here. I should be juking down. Down is fine to keep my distance from Nidalee uh, maximized. But I think maybe the thing was trying to not lend ourselves to an easy spear path where it for sure hits like me or Zin. But I just need to break this line of scrimmage that's sort of evolving in the fight. So right now, I've walked from here all the way back to here. If I had instead gone all the way, I could be here right now. Right? And if I'm there, I'm like right next to Braun. At this point, when the turret drops its aggro, I'm behind Braum, instead of all the way caught out trying to 1v2 here, right? Now sure, I'm higher level, but I don't have ultimate. I don't have the 6 on my side. So, eh, not the best. Do get some chunk damage on Nidalee. I have exhaust, so I have to throw it up to survive. I can't use it properly to, uh, like, get a kill off of that. I have to use it just to be able to break through the line of scrimmage, right? Which I finally do. But I basically threw away exhaust there. If I had just broke that line of scrimmage quicker, then I could have been out, we could have had that exhaust for like a follow-up dive. You know, we could have gone back in, exhausted Nidalee, 
and focused her. We exhausted Alistair, since he's still not very tanky yet, and just blown him up. And doesn't have six, you know? Instead, we have to use it defensively, so that's unfortunate. A bit of a... Um, I don't Miss position! Team fight positioning was a little off there. So let's speed it up. Let's get back to lane. Run it out. We get back here before missing too much. Do push it out because we've got an idea Fizz is backed. Now, it's still early enough in the game to where it's going to be tough to take this camp. And since Dragon's up, rotating down here isn't the bad move. I do need to be more aware of rotating to these two camps, though, in between my own waves. Because that's how you get much better CS, and I've been having poor CS the past few games. Means do it. We know from the control work that there's no vision of it. Got pretty good secure vision on this side, so we know we're not going to be ganked, or we know we're not going to be contested. Them being here makes this seem like it's less likely to be happening, and it gives us vision of where the their bot lane is. Basically, get it for free. I don't go through here at the last second. You saw me initially starting to path this way to go through the fog of war back to this lane but it's a fizz and even though even if it weren't a fizz i should still take this safe route instead back to lane because it's just less risky and what i'm gonna miss like one or two minions to for sure not die I should do that against pretty much every mid laner. I'm only doing that because it's a fizz, but I should do that against every mid laner. There's no reason to take that additional risk. It's one thing, because right now, I would be entering this brush. Zen isn't close enough to follow up, and he doesn't have six yet. So there's no reason not to be doing that. Since I wasn't immediately attacked, he has Mia, but then he's here. Great, I'm at some levels, and we got the dragon basically for free. It's really good. Trying to farm this out, miss some CS, whatever it happens. So I'm focusing on trying to get the minion wave kind of shoved here. Because it was already shoving since I had these casters built up. Pressuring it like that will one, free me up to maybe go do this camp. Like I was talking about earlier, now that I've got a few more levels, I can do that a bit more easily. Or, in a scenario like this, where Fizz goes in, I've got five casters who will answer or call the help by attacking Fizz. And these two minions just died. So even if I was trading more forward, like in the middle of the casters, the two remaining minions are not going to answer that call for help. So we're going to win this trade... Theoretically, right? All other things equal, we would win this trade. So this is a good trade for me. Unfortunately, since I had just burned the cooldowns there on my move and uh, dissonance, or my attack and dissonance, the command names, hard to remember. Fizz is going to be getting his full rotations of cooldowns for free. So all I have is a shield, which I do use. The minions put in a little bit of work, but he playful tricksters most of them. And... He's playful trickstering right as my shield is about to expire. So between all that and having fish, he's going to bring out a lot of damage. Now, I try and ult him into the turret and then immediately flash away. But the damage from his ultimate is just too much already. And that's what you have to do with Fizz. you got to respect the ultimate damage, the all-in potential, especially when he takes Ignite. You have to respect that all-in potential. And I, I wasn't doing that there. It is fair to say I wasn't doing that there. Um, even with the minions on my side, Fizz are already had his Sheen, so he's going to be 
doing a lot of damage by rotating spells and getting that spell blade, spell blade proc. So I need to play safer than that, right? And he has, from that, he has more combat stats effectively. I mean, it's arguable with the cooldown reduction and the spell blade. Probably more combat stacks than just the 25 mana I'm getting from my lost chapter. So I've got the sustain item. He has the combat item. I need to be playing back and playing much more defensively. I shouldn't have to flash to be that close to my turret, you know? I should have the ball way ahead of me and be much further back. So this is splitting myself between the ball and my actual Oriana body. I need to do that a little bit more. Give myself a little bit more space, create more distance so I can't get solo killed with uh, the chum waters like that. So I miss a little bit of CS because of that, he shoves it in. More importantly, I give him a kill, whatever. You know, it happens. Moving forward here. Trying to push this in because we assume he's backed. Throw down the ward there to make sure that nobody's missing. Or uh, that he's not just missing and he's coming for me. And then move on to clearing out these raptors. This is really good. This is how you get your CS back in the game. And my CS was trailing behind, so I needed to start doing that. Rotate back around. Start looking towards bottom. At this point, there's a lot of minions here I could be getting. But Fizz has rotated bottom, and they've survived it already. So if I can get there, if, if they can bait this confrontation to continue, and then I can get there, they're easy pickings for me, right? And which they're doing, right? As they're disengaging, they're walking forward trying to bait this out, and I'm coming in. Alistair goes in because that's all Alistair does. He's a very linear champion. He goes in. <laughs> and because of that, I can take advantage of the situation, right? And since we have good control ward coverage, we know for the most part they're not going to be seeing me coming. Once I'm here in range of these brushes, they might see us. But along the way, this fog of war is almost guaranteed. Right here we just look out. Luck out, rather. And I get to come in. Now at this point, since they're going forward like that, if I had instead been coming around in the back, I might have been able to get a more, like, money ball position from, like, here. I could have command attacked to here. And then shock waved right here and gotten these two targets as they retreated back this way once they saw me show breaking the fog of war here. Or I could have positioned, if Draven was already gone, I could have positioned and tried to hit these two. But instead I go straight in to try and disincentivize them fighting these two. But I think this is a fight that these two can easily survive. Fizz might even go too hard and kill himself going into that. right? And Alistair already blew his combo, which I saw. So I should have gone a bit more of an aggressive path here. Tumble the waters defensively. Braun's trying to make it happen. I turn my focus to Fizz. Or I don't, actually. Oh, wow. I just thought that was so obvious that I was just, just going to do it. I guess I was just thinking that Lucian was going to, after surviving Chum the Waters, be able to finish him. But that's just not the case. This damage should have been right on the Fizz. It takes more. Actually, Braum ends up getting the kill, so that would have been a kill onto me as well. Which... I don't mind if the kill goes on to, like, Lucian, but we definitely don't want it on Braum as a team overall. So that was unfortunate. I am able to find the Shockwave here. I wouldn't have had to burn the Shockwave on Fizz even if I had turned Focus to him. But I do get the two-man Shockwave. Forces out the heal. Unfortunately, they're able to kill Braum. Zin comes in and he does make that a two-for-one. Or they're able to kill... Yeah, they're able to kill Braum. This just hasn't shown up yet. Yeah, there it is. So, we wind up making that a fairly even trade. 
I mean, the amount of time spent, I think we came out ahead, but that's like too even of a trade. If I had pathed more aggressively through here, I could have got that ultimate to start the fight, and I could have got it on Fizz as well. So maybe that two-man ultimate would have been a lot more impactful earlier on. Maybe that changes the whole dynamic of that. Good dodge there. He goes back in. Unfortunately, I'm a little slow because I'm far back from dodging the Nidalee Spear, which I don't think... you got to dodge the Nidalee Spear, so I don't think there's anything that can be done about that. It's just about trying to position myself as close to Zen as possible so I can command the ball around him. And if I had gotten this W off on Draven, or even just hit Draven with this shield, that was a dead Draven. So another kill missed. Some team fight positioning errors. Rotate back mid. As soon as I realize Fizz is still with the wave, I think, okay, this is a problem. Because this all-in isn't going to happen. So I decide, okay, well, I can just exhaust him and I'll be fine. That's really dumb. <laughs> I shouldn't have done that. I should have again. This is the same thing from earlier, having walked through that, not walked through this fog of war in the river, and instead come around this way. Instead of coming around this way, I should have gone this way. And sure, I have to path much further, but look at that. I'm, I lost like half my health, half my total health, and I wasn't at full health. <laughs> so that's not good. And with Zinn coming up to try and support, now I can't really be anywhere near Fizz when he's trying to make this happen. If I had instead taken the safe route, Fizz could have stayed on this turret, or on the minion wave here at least. And sure, I might be back here, but I'd have full health. Zin would be coming in from the flank down here. And all of a sudden, with this zone, a danger zone from Zin, and me coming in this way, with the ball shockwave being able to go out probably as far as this area, the only real safe spot for Fizz is right here. And both of us, Zen and I, are going to pincer this. And he's got to run out this way and at a really efficient angle. Otherwise, he's in danger. So, unfortunately, I didn't do that. Okay, it's happening bottom lane. Nice, getting the stun from Braum. That's all you really gotta do. All you really gotta do. Going back to the game we did a lesson on with me as Braum. Gotta be making sure you get those stuns off. That's what Braum's all about. That's where all his power is. So I'm back. Now I am standing pretty far forward. I had just backed. So I'm feeling naturally kind of confident. And again... I want to control this lane phase. I want to beat down Fizz so he can't just farm up. Because, again, letting a Fizz farm is how you wind up creating a monster. Also, feeding him a lot of kills is how you wind up creating a monster. But, you know, I was just thinking I got to bully him in lane. I think that's wrong. I think, even though that happens a lot, I think what I have to do is play much more, especially, like, once he's hit 6, I must play defensively. Unless if I know this ultimate is down. Because if it's not down, he can throw it out. Even with the shield. Come right in. Guide me. I can throw out the ultimate. And he still manages to get the kill. And he just, he just barely survives. Under 100 hit points. But nonetheless he survives. And he's able to push it in. And punish me. Braum comes in. Trying to be the hero. Unfortunately, the execute happens. So, I mean, we're hitting kind of the midpoint of the game. Maybe this is a good opportunity to take a brief pause for the cause here. And think about this. Alright. So we got another 20 minutes, but they're, they're going to be fairly delineated into team fights. And this is roughly the end of the laning phase, right? The first turrets have dropped, luckily in our favor. <laughs> And the kills are starting to come in. 
So what we needed to have done so far is rather than trying to play to deny Fizz, maybe at level 1, maybe even whenever before 6 he uses one of his cooldowns on the minion wave and then he has to wait for that cooldown, okay, maybe then play aggressively, try and zone the Fizz out of as much farm as possible. But during the laning phase, you got to re respect the damage from Fizz. you got to respect the 6 that can come out. And I just wasn't respecting that. I just wasn't playing around Fizz's power that comes from his ultimate and the rest of his kit synergizing together. And he just is able to burst you really hard. And I need to respect that. I need to play properly respecting that. And we saw earlier too, breaking up my body and balls positioning in fights and rotating them around so my ball can be doing the zoning while my body sort of just walks through the more safer areas and repositions itself out of an engagement when the engagement's starting to end. That's what we need to be focused on. That's what we need to be doing when we're working our way through these team fights, like positioning the ball and myself, <laughs> you know, um, and respecting Fizz. Those seem to be the main things for the first chunk of this battle or of this match that we could have improved on. So we're going to break here. We're going to go on a brief break and uh, we'll come back with the second half here and we'll finish analyzing uh, how we could have played this game a little bit better. See you guys in a moment.